Fahrenheit 451, Ray Bradbury. Firefighter Montag, who is wearing a patriotic shirt, continues to burn books in Turkey. According to the official statement of the Turkish Minister of National Education, 301,878 books in state libraries were destroyed between 2016 and 2019 due to the decriminalization of their author or publishing house as an enemy of the state. This number does not include books confiscated during raids on houses, schools, dormitories. The temperature that emerged from the burned books has not changed at all. Fahrenheit 451. 1984, George Orwell. But who knows the facts of Turkey, which are also confirmed by books that have been read millions of times. The verifications produced or approved by George Orwell's Ministry of Truth in 1984 could reach the masses. Today, 92% of the news information available to citizens in Turkey is out of the hands of the government via the Ministry of Communication in Turkey. Everything you write, even on your own small social media account, let alone the national media, is monitored by the police. The Diary of a Young Girl, Anne Frank. As word of mouth spreads about the families who disappeared in the Aegean Sea, the fathers who lost their baby in the waters of the Evros River separating Greece and Turkey. Running away is no longer a solution for many families. The only option left is to hide. The story of children who have been living for months with their parents in the attic of an apartment building or in the only room of a village house without a crack is the part of the most pathetic story that has been recorded day by day in history. The Handmaid's Tale, Margaret Atwood. In these harsh conditions, the powerless have little choice but to flee. New lives had begun for those who crossed a sea or a river and reached the territory of Greece, such as those who ran from Gilead to the border with Canada, the dystopia of Atwood. However, what was waiting for those who stayed behind was the fatwas issued by the new regime's faithful clerics shouting in the squares, the wives, daughters, and property of these traitors are all yours. The tradition of demonstrating the power of fiction or real totalitarian regimes by reacting on the female body had not changed. The Gulag Archipelago, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn wrote about how totalitarian regimes tried to convert people they labeled objectionable in concentration camps in the Gulag Archipelago, but he could not think of a plan by the Turkish government to collect people they labeled as terrorists in camps even after death. The Traitor's Cemetery. Death and the Dervish. Mesa Selimovic. There were those who sacrificed their sons, brothers, nephews, and their closest neighbors to the regime they worshiped. They slandered, reported, framed them to be caught by the police without suffering the pangs of remorse of the writer who sacrificed his brother to the system, Selimovic, that would have been enough to print dervish and death. They performed it as a patriotic duty. Fabion. Henri Cherrier. Has anyone read and finished the masterpiece called The Butterfly, written by Henri Cherrier, without asking the following question? Was Henri Cherrier really innocent? Even relatives, friends, neighbors, who knew 500,000 housewives, teachers, shopkeepers, journalists, pensioners, or university students very well, asked this question. Because if the authority declares you guilty, it is your duty to prove that you are innocent, and this may never be enough. Der Possess, Franz Kafka. In 2016, about 500,000 men and women in Turkey found themselves among the leaves of Kafka's book, The Trial. Thousands slept as an ordinary Turkish citizen then woke up as a notorious criminal in the next morning, lost their titles with the decree laws. They were condemned to be socially dead. Because the cases were decided on confidentiality, even their lawyers could not find out exactly what they were accused of for a long time just as Joseph K.